Hey guys, Maven here. Now, as a child, we get yelled at a lot. Well, in the WWE, nothing really changes. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the wrestlers who yelled at me, and one of them left me on the verge of tears. The first wrestler we're gonna talk about is no surprise, the guy probably wasn't the happiest that I was there. And on this night, I was actually sharing the ring with him as his tag team partner. Of course, I'm talking about the legend, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Now, now, when I got put on the full-time roster and I was actually working the house shows, the non-televised events, week after week, tour after tour, loop after loop, they were constantly just looking for ways to make me better. And there's nobody, I mean nobody, on this earth that you can learn more from than this man right here. On this night, he was working with me and I was extremely green. This was early in my career. I definitely didn't want to make myself look stupid, but moreover, I did not want to make this man look stupid. At this point, I didn't know he didn't like me. I had hopes that there could still be a level of mutual respect between one another. And if I had those hopes, they were all dashed the night we stepped into Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, the reason I remember and tell you the exact city that we were in is the city actually plays a role in why Sean yelled at me. For most people, if I say, give me a city at high elevation, meaning above sea level, immediately, what's coming to your mind? Did you think of Denver? Of course you did. Denver, Colorado, the mile high city. Everyone thinks of that. Hell, our Olympic team trains in Colorado. Why? Because at high elevation, the air is thinner. And if the air is thinner, it makes your cardiovascular system work even harder. But this plays against you if you're not used to it. Catching your breath can be the most difficult thing for you to do. They warned me about this going into the match and I found out the very first running spot I did. I was gasping for air and I wanted out. As the match progresses, I find myself in a spot and imitation, once again, being the most sincerest form of flattery, I was on my back and I was trying to do a move that The Rock and does a nip up. It was pretty easy for me to do during this time. I mean, I could do it usually with, without hands. Didn't matter. I was athletic enough that I could pull the move off at sea level. <laughs> because being at over 5,000 feet of elevation, when I went to do my nip up, I realized I had absolutely no air in my lungs and I got no lift off my nip up. So when I went to pop up, I didn't fully land and I landed right on my butt and went back down on my back. It was a live show, it wasn't a televised match, so not the biggest deal in the world, but once again, I was in the ring with a legend. And if I looked bad by association, he looked bad. So once the match was over, once the crowd got a good chuckle, out of the rookie not landing a simple move, we get backstage and Sean laid into me. He told me, if you're not 100% sure you can do and land a move, don't do it. Take it out of your arsenal. I pretty much kept my mouth shut. I think I tried to spit out a reason, but he didn't want to hear it. He was in the same elevation I was. He didn't have an oxygen tank over on the side getting air while I was in the ring. He was going through the exact same conditions I did. So an excuse, he didn't want to hear. And to be honest, I felt kind of bad. He wasn't wrong. In this case, I was 100% in the wrong. I went to do a move I wasn't prepared to do. I can make all the excuses in the world about elevation and hell, I just did. So in this case, showstopper, you were in the right. Not me. Sean yelling at me was for a mistake that I was 100% wrong about. This next guy would scold me for actually overstepping my boundaries. And that would come from William Regal. One day at the ring early prior to a live event, I found myself 
wrestling around with William Regal. And my match actually called for an arm bar. But I didn't want to do your conventional hammer or wrist lock. I wanted to do something with a little bit of pizzazz on it. And if there's an arm bar that this man doesn't know, <laughs> please show me. He can get you in moves almost from any position. So working around in the ring with him, he was actually showing one of the moves and he performed a move on me that was a shoot or a real move, meaning there was no fight in this move. I was going where he wanted. And it was one of those moves that if too much pressure was applied, could actually break your wrist and break it pretty easily. So once he did it, I immediately you know, show me that move. I wanted to learn it so bad. Regal made it clear to me he wasn't going to show me the move because when someone knows submission holds, you have to have respect for them. You have to have respect for the person's body that you're in the ring with. They're giving you their body. You want to make sure you're returning their body with the least amount of damage as possible. Fast forward about 30 minutes. He saw me over in the corner trying to practice thus move on someone else. He made a beeline to me, scolding me. I didn't teach you this move on purpose, lad. That didn't mean go over here and practice it on your own. To him, I was disrespecting a skill that took him years to learn and a skill that if not performed correctly, could have seriously hurt someone else. So far, none of these stories have had me on the verge of tears. Don't worry, that one's coming. But this next story was a tongue lashing from one of my best friends. And that would come from none other than Devon Dudley. Now, in a previous video about wrestlers who hated me, I told you all about mine and Devon's contentious early relationship. Well, when this disappointment lace tirade would happen, it was years later. Once we were great friends and actually traveling on the road together. Let me set the scene for you. 2003, Raleigh, North Carolina, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H are about to tie the knot and I'm at Hunter's bachelor party. So the bachelor party finds itself at a gentleman's club and it's pretty much the entire roster and the night goes without a hitch. We have a blast. The night's coming to an end and Devon's going to get the rental car and I decide to make one more lap in the strip club. Being the last wrestler to come out of the club, I walk out the double doors and immediately see Vince McMahon and Undertaker standing off to my left and Devon with the rental car a few feet behind them. And not being in the best frame of mind to start a conversation with Vince at the time, I'm simply trying to make a beeline for the rental car before these two realize I'm waiting for a dancer that gave me the wrong name all night. And as I walk to the car, Taker says five words that would later piss Devon off to no end. He says, kid, take a hip toss. And when Taker tells you to take a hip toss, you take a damn hip toss. And that's exactly what I did. I charged Taker full speed. And as he gave me a hip toss up in the air and down on Devon's rental car, I would come. And I wouldn't just land on the car. I would land on the windshield, shattering it immediately, leaving Devon dumbfounded with how I could be so stupid. And off in the background, you had Vince McMahon giggling, <laughs> good shit. And all I had to give him was, Taker told me to take a hip toss. <laughs> so as I roll myself off the hood, slouched over in embarrassment, I jumped in the car with Devon and he's yelling at me, Maven, what the F were you thinking? Look at the car. And I, all I could tell him was, D Devon, Taker told me to take a hip toss. I don't give a f what he told you. Keep in mind, the windshield is totaled. It's completely shattered. And we have about a 10 to 15 minute ride back to our hotel where Devon had to drive with his head out the window the whole time. And he's just yelling at me the entire time. I'm offering to pay for it. He's telling me, I got 
fucking insurance. No, don't worry about it. You've done enough. Needless to say, I apologized profusely for it. And insurance eventually did pay for the windshield. But I will go to my grave knowing I was in the right. Because even to this day, if Taker tells me to take a hip toss, I'm taking a hip toss. All the wrestlers that yelled at me, although not too enjoyable, they were trying to make me better. They had good intentions. This next one to me was, well, mean-spirited and actually left me questioning why I ever became a wrestler in the first place. And I've mentioned this guy in the past and undoubtedly, I'm sure you're not surprised to see this person was Dean Malenko. To set the tone a bit, I have to explain to you that Dean was at the time what we called an agent and they call them producers now, meaning they are the veterans whose job it is to help the younger wrestlers put together wrestling matches so they make sense, so they tell a story, so they advance a storyline or an arc. When we're at live television shows, the producers are helping put the show together. They're helping put all the matches on. When we're at non-televised or house shows, they are, in essence, running the event. They're running the night. In late 2004, my run as a babyface, or a good guy, well, it was coming to an end. And the office wanted to see what my chops was like as a bad guy, a heel. And I was extremely excited for this. And after my heel turn, my first round of matches would come with the professional Shelton Benjamin. The one thing I didn't have in my favor is this man, he was gonna be my producer for this show. The show would take place in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And Wilkes-Barre was about a four hour drive to my house in Virginia, so it was one of the few shows I looked forward to knowing after the show, I was gonna be able to sleep in my own bed that night. But what I didn't know is that four hour drive would be one of the worst drives of my life. Dean Malenko, the man of a thousand holds, has forgotten more wrestling than I could learn in four lifetimes. What Dean didn't have at the time was good bedside manner. Now, what do I mean by that? Dean knew how inexperienced I was and he did not want the burden of putting on a bad show. So going into my match with Shelton where I would be a heel or a bad guy for the first time ever, I don't think Dean expected much and he made it known I didn't exceed his expectations after the match. And for all those that might be thinking, okay, whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, what the hell's the difference? Your match responsibilities completely change depending on what you are. Having my match with Shelton Benjamin, I knew it was rocky and I knew I had improvements that needed to be made. What I did not know is just how utterly shitty this man would say it was the moment I stepped out of the ring. I got backstage and was immediately told from him it was one of the worst wrestling matches he's ever seen. He made it clear he never wanted to work with me as my producer and agent again. And I don't think we did. And to add insult to injury, he didn't pull me aside and give me this information. Oh no. He would dress me down in front of the entire locker room and make sure everybody heard him along the way. Enough to lead my opponent Shelton Benjamin and another producer, Arn Anderson, to even pull me aside after to tell me it wasn't that bad and it's gonna get better. This is your first time doing something. Obviously, you're not gonna be perfect your first time trying. And while I appreciate Arn and Shelton's support, that four hour drive home was atrocious. I not only thought my job was in jeopardy, I thought the time, effort, and skill I thought I was progressing with was for nothing. And there's no worse feeling in the world than thinking you've done something for absolutely nothing. The one thing I did know by the time I got home was I was gonna become a good heel one day, no matter what he had to say. Getting yelled at is a small price to pay to be a WWE wrestler, but there are some larger consequences that come with the job. And to find out what those are, click the link on screen.